Hello everybody, my name is Rohit Shpande, and in this video, I want to go through a more concrete example of um, applying this uh, naive Bayes uh, approach to seeing if there is spam or not. And so I want to substitute concrete values uh, for these, and so we can kind of see, I'm going to try to make the, the values, um, the values are going to be, you know, obvious so that we can see that this is a good approach and that it works. And so let's let's kind of use an example. So I'm going to give you some of some of these numbers. So first, I'll give you the probability of that we have a message and it's spam. So you can, and this is something that you can again you can compute from your data set. But I'm just going to kind of use the like overall statistics. So the way that you know there's been like studies done to try to find this value, and so it's been shown that about nine eighty six or eighty six percent of messages that you get. Uh, or, or spam. And so logically, if 86% of messages you get are spam, then that means that the other 14% uh, must be messages that are not spam. So I can write that. Probability of getting spam from not spam is then 0 0.14. And this follows logically because these messages either spam or not spam. Now, suppose that the word we're looking at is the word free. And so now we need, we still need we're still missing some values. So we have like here, here, and here. So we got three values down. We still need uh, three more. And we'll really, really just need two more because these two are the same here. Actually, these two are the same here as well. And so let's suppose that you know the, we're looking at the word free because spam messages, like I mentioned, I tend to have the word free in there. And regular emails that you get ham emails generally don't have the word, but they could. So let's make this like really obvious. So let's suppose that um, the probability that we find the word free in a spam message is something really high, like 0.96. And so what this is saying, what this is saying is that the, the odds that we find the word free in a spam message is 96%. Uh, that means that in, you know, it, given that a message is you know, if we know that a message is spam, then you know, we have this chance of, of the word free appears in, in spam messages 96% of the time. What we want to find is whether this message, this new message that we get, uh, we, that we received was spam, given that it has the word free in it. So based on just looking at this number, you can probably already, you're probably already thinking that, well, this is probably going to be a spam message because, you know, in our data set, for example, this is such a high probability. Um, but let's you know let's suppose that you know finding the message finding the free in a in a message that's not spam is something like 0 0.02. So two very few in very few cases, um, you know, like two percent of the time we find the word free in in something that is uh, not spam. And, and it's important to note that these two things. Are not related, so you can't do the same thing like you did here. Um, you can't be like, well, hey, so you know, if this is free in spam message, then why why don't I have 0.04 here? Because 0.04 is actually a probability of finding of not finding free in a spam message. That would be 0.04. So these two things are not related at all. So now we actually have enough values to plug this in and and find our answer. So just kind of off the bat, you can probably, I try to make this obvious, um, but you can probably tell that this message is you know, going to be spam because the probability that you find the word free in a spam message is 96%. So for the word free is a pretty good indicator. Finding the word free is a pretty good indicator that your message is spam. And so let's actually like go through a computation and, and find this probability. And we expect it to be really high. So let's plug in values. So suppose I want to find the probability that the message is spam given that it has the word uh, free in it. Well, that's equal to the probability of finding the word uh, free in spam messages times the overall probability that this any given input is spam to begin with and times the probability that I find the word that the same thing here plus the probability that I find the word free in a message that is not spam times the probability that this message is not spam. And so I can like plug in values here. 
So the probability that it's free, given that it's um, probably defining the word free in spam message is 0.96. Maybe 0.96 times probability that I actually have a spam message. Point, point 0.86 divided by the same quantity here. Notice that these two are the same because this is one possible outcome and this is supposed to be overall outcomes. Plus, probability that I find the word free in a ham message is only 0 0.02. And then the probability of actually finding, of uh, getting a message that is uh, not spam is 0 0.14. So when I compute all of this out, I get a 0.99, what's that, 66. And so looking at this value, we know from our from our data set or from you know wherever you wherever you find these values from, we know that this input email is almost almost positive that this input email is a spam message. And we just did that by knowing just these four values. And and these values are actually things that we learn from our uh, from from our data set. You know, given our input data set, remember that they're, that they're labeled examples of spam and hand messages. So we can compute these, this probability. So we, we can know what the probability of receiving a spam message is based on our data set. We, likewise, we also know this. And then we can find, you know, this probability uh, about, our, about, about our word or, you know, in, in cases, words. And, and there's actually a problem with this uh, approach that I'm going to address in the next video um, is that is that, you know, it's not just, we just don't want to look at a single word, there's actually, I mean, we want to look at all the words in our email, and there's kind of, I'm going to talk about why it's called naive Bayes uh, in the next video, because of this assumption that we make, but, um, but yeah, so we can see that this is actually a pretty good way that we can determine whether an email is, is spam or not, by looking at What's the likelihood that I find a? What's the likelihood that I find this word or any word in a spam message? And what's the likelihood that I find it in a message that isn't spam? And then you know compute that 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 probability. And so you now suppose I had this in reverse. Suppose instead of free, I had like um, you know something like oh I don't know like report or uh, or like report or research or something like that. Now, then what's probably going to happen is that the probability that I find the word research, for example, in a spam message is, is probably going to be pretty low, or, you know, it'll be lower than if I, you know, look at it, the probability of finding the word research in a, in, in a ham message, or, or a message that's not spam if I'm looking at my university account, for example. So, you know, based on that, then what would happen is this probability would actually be pretty low, the probability of finding the word uh, the probability that this message is spam, given that it has the word research in it, for example, that probability might be low. And if it's low, then I can conclude that this message is not spam. And these two things are, and these two, like, finding this and this, a probability that it's not spam, given that it has the word free in it, by the way, uh, are indeed related, by the way, because, um, you know, so if the probability that I have a message, if, uh, if it's a spam message given it has the word free, it's 0 0.9966, then the probability that it's not spam or it's ham is going to be what, 0 0.0044, and so that's very low probability, so I want to pick which one of these uh, gets me is, is the highest probability. In this case, it's far more likely that this input email is um, is spam instead of ham, and so I can route that to my uh, my spam folder. And I should mention that the the algorithms and techniques that companies use are first of all proprietary, and they're probably far more complicated than this. But this approach, you know, is is actually not that bad. Uh, so this is kind of it's certainly more certainly easier to understand than, than some of the more advanced techniques. So we'll just be looking at um, we'll be looking at this. And so I'm going to stop right here. Just do a quick recap. Uh, so we actually ran through a computation of using a naive base technique to determine if a message was spam given that it has the word free in it. And I kind of gave you some numbers here. That, well, the probability of getting any message that's spam is like pretty high. And, and consequently, the probability of getting a message that is 
ham is pretty low, and then you know we can look to our data set and say, well, what's the problem? Well, based on my experience, have I seen the word free in spam messages or ham messages? And so, based on that, I can uh, I know whether or not this is you know spam or ham because then I just look at how many times have I seen this in um, in spam messages versus ham messages, and then we computed this probability and we found that. This this message is almost almost one hundred percent positive that this message is uh, is almost one hundred percent likely that this message is uh, spam, and so that's uh, how we can do a computation of naive Bayes. All these things are things that we can learn. Our algorithm can automatically compute for us. It's kind of a problem with this is that we're only looking at a single word, but we want to be looking at you know emails are a sequence of words, so we want to be able to consider a sequence uh, of words. So I'm going to address how we can do that. Uh, in the next video.